Before we begin, thank you very much for staying here over the last month. I haven't been posting videos and for that I'm very sorry. My laptop screen broke and because of that I couldn't edit videos properly. Anyway, the replacement panel arrived today and the laptop is now fixed. If you'd like to see a video about the panel replacement process, please comment below. I'm unlikely to make a separate video about it since, since it's uh, quite simple, but I could put it at the beginning or at the end of, um, of one of the upcoming videos if you're at all interested. Thanks again for staying with me, back to the video now. Good morning, afternoon, evening or night to all of you depending on your time. This is the sixth episode of the series called Laptop Liquid Loop or the Triple L project for short. We're finally starting to actually make things. Let's go, right after this intro. So the way we're going to do this is uh, first I'll unbox and explain the items that had to be bought in that will go inside the casing. And then there'll be a time lapse of uh, me making the casing. The items are a pump, two fans, a fan controller and a power adapter. You may have noticed I didn't mention a radiator and that's because I haven't received it yet. But the dimensions of the radiator are on the item page so I can still make the casing. Anyway, let's unbox what we have. Starting from the power adapter. The one I have here is a 70 watt phobia power adapter. Its output specs are 12 volts DC at up to 5 amps um, through a 4-pin Molex type connector. This should be plenty of power for the two fans, the fan control and the pump, which this adapter will be powering. The adapter brick measures at uh, 30 by 45 by 110 millimeters, uh, with the Molex cable at uh, around 60 centimeters or 600 millimeters. The adapter came with two socket plug types, the US and EU, which some people may find useful. For my application though, the US type is completely redundant since uh, most of the time I'm in the UK and when I travel, I travel to either Russia or um, Israel. Let's move on to the fans. I decided to go for the Corsair SP120s, um, red LED ones. They're focused on delivering more static pressure instead of airflow, so they're meant to be used to cool radiators, unlike high airflow fans. Um, that are used to provide good airflow in a PC. The fans can spin up to 1650 RPM. The speed is quite average by today's standards. For example, some of EK's fans can go up to 3000 RPM, almost double the speed of the SP120s. However, 1650 should be plenty for our usage, considering we have complete control over the casing and so can make it much less restrictive than a normal PC case. The red LEDs don't have a purpose and I would personally prefer RGB for more FPS. The reason I went for a simple LED is that RGB would require a controller and we already have one controller so I feel that adding another one would overcomplicate the production process as well as the user experience. Next up we have the fan controller. This is Thermaltake's Commander fan controller. The version we've got here has five channels, so up to five fans can be connected and powered through the controller. It also has a touch screen, uh, which to be fair isn't better than simple rotation dials, but dials would protrude a little bit more. Who am I kidding? I just went for the touch screen version because it looks good. And the last item we have is EK's D5 Pump Res Combo. Its full name is EK ACR Revo D5 MX and I should offer EK to work in their marketing department. No person is going to remember this awful name. Regardless though, 
This pump is the only one in EK's fluid gaming lineup. This lineup focuses on aluminum custom loop components, which is just what we need. The unit itself has three ports in total, two on the side of the pump as input and output, and one on the top of the res as a fill port. Now that we've got our components unboxed, we need to test the power adapter and make sure it's going to work. It's marketed as for audio equipment, so I'm not sure what is going to happen here. For all I know, it could die straight away and take any connected components with it. That's why I'm going to connect just the fan controller and one fan first. If that works, I'll connect all of the components as they'll be connected in the casing. As you can hopefully see, everything works just fine. The pump is clearly running, you can see bubbles moving inside the res. The fan controller is also working as intended. I can change the fan speed or turn the fans off. Now that this part is done, let's actually start making the casing. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>
That was some hard work, but sadly I haven't managed to finish the casing yet. There is still quite a lot to get done, uh, but I'll show you the rest in the next video. Don't forget to check the description for my social media links. I post updates there my, um, more often than uh, videos here. Do comment if you have any questions or suggestions. I read and reply to everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next part.